The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman by Shaharah Hazad Ali. Chapter 3 Adulthood Single and Married. As the black woman grows and develops intellectually, she eventually lands in the spot that her practices led her to. There are several levels of black womanhood that she can strive for. Each level of lifestyle choice is pre- pre- predicated, predi- pre- predicated solely on her desires. What she knows or earn is the result of how she has she's been raised and what she's willing to settle for in life. The higher her goals, the more sophisticated she is. Increased knowledge always expands the desires, be they material, sexual, or otherwise. The black woman is not exempt from these rules, albeit she is often a victim of them due to being such a displaced female. The black man must be aware of the various types of black women available to him. His selection must be based upon his own individual needs. He is entirely possible that some of the traits of the black woman in their prospective categories overlap. It has been proven that a black man is capable of taking a woman and making her beautiful, intelligent, and wise. She is not able to create the same effect by herself. She will have one of the three or two of the three but she cannot achieve beauty, intelligence, and wisdom alone. The black man is her catalyst. Without his spark of life and light, she does not bloom. Blooming is quite different from having a good-paying job or a high-class education. Each of the black women discussed during the the next few pages can be taught to bloom. Risking the threat of being further charged with overgeneralization of group stereotyping, The following list describes the three basic types of black women. They are all dissimilar only in the depth of their problematic behavior. All are infected with a historical disease of cultural neglect. Negligence. They believe themselves to be living the right life. The ones that is the only lifestyle available to them in this country setting, which most of them believe the place this is, is the best place on earth. For be it from their considerations to take steps to improve their psychological conditions because they ironically do not know they are out of sync with their natural role in the universe. Even though across the board they are not happy. The lives they live make sense to them because they have not been taught or any kind that will provide them with happiness. Historically, the black woman has had access to lifestyle choices not offered to the black man. He is not tolerated in showing moodiness, fickleness, or pettiness. The, uh, the aforementioned emotional personality traits are in, indigenous to, to the black female gender. To describe these separate groups of black men, the use of colloquial language may seem derogatory or insulting. It is not meant to be that way. The special language is ethnically specific and recognizable to the learned and the unlearned black man. The terminology is not meant to be humorous either. There are no age limitations on the characteristics of these women. The three types of predictably, one, the lower grade, two, the average, three, the high class, one, the low-life black woman. This black woman may have been subjected to object multi-generational poverty, illiteracy, and shame as a child. She works on the lowest rung of employment due to not being properly educated. She dresses her she dresses in inexpensive Kmart type styles, and her face is greasy from wearing too much cheap makeup. Her hair will also be greasy perhaps have a few specks of lint and may be plastered down around her face in an unsuccessful attempt to create curls or the baby hair look. Some may sport a raggedy ponytail with a child's barrette or rubber band. Bathing is not that important. Her bra strap may be gray from non-washing 
and she may wear her panties two or three days straight without changing them or wear none at all. She drinks alcohol to the point of intoxication and curses loud in public, real loud. She hangs around weekly in common local corner bars and go out with strange men who she fights with regularly. She may have a main black man who she fights with at will. She has a battle scar on her face, neck, arms, and hands for war with men and women in her neighborhood or nightclubs. She goes along easily with immoral dares and regulate aggressively to her neighbors. She does not read the newspaper and uses drugs when they are available. If she does not work, she is on the public dole, welfare. She may dress her child and children in the latest styles and spend all of her welfare check on clothes and partying. She views each check day as heaven on earth, a short-lived time when she has purchasing power to feed her to paid wishes. She might have a gold tooth or a few teeth missing. Her nails are conceivably cheap or broken. Her posture is that of a toad. She may be overweight and on an over-average breather with a protruding poke gut. She comfortably wears run-over socks, run-over shoes. Her heels may be dirty and crusty. She borrows money and food from her neighbors. She uses deodorant occasionally and, and is overly impressed with fancy-dressed black men in big flashy cars with lots of gold. She is materialistic on a small scale and does not like to stay indoors. Even on cold winter nights, she can be seen roaming the streets or going back and forth to and after our joint. She is not ashamed of her conditions or predicament and appears to be quite satisfied during her sterile, non-productive days. Her time is made up with gossiping with her neighbors, hood cronies, looking at televisions, wish shopping in air by malls, yelling at her children, not keeping up with her children, and walking back and forth to the corner store. She shops above her means, has no plans to change and attempt to use the black man available to finalize him out of money, drinks or calls or rides. She has no idea what to do with the black man herself, and she does not fantasize about a better life. She is looked upon as shameful and civilized society and is considered a savage. She often hates the black woman in the higher social classes and considers them conceited. Her world of thought is very, very small. Her ideas are simplified and she speaks the language in flat abbreviated terms full of mispronunciation and wrong tenses. She does not know any better and does not think she is capable of learning better. She is in a pitiful state of condition and if she has any dreams at all, they are all black men rescuing her from her status. She is also inclined to respond to the advances of white men looking for a good time. She may sprinkle herself with a cheap perfume profusely. If a black woman on this level is involved with drugs or abuses alcohol, she becomes a drug in, of society and a corrupt mother. Men do, do not matter to her at all on that level unless they can provide her with money or contraband. This group requires no further discussion. Other than that, this black woman must be claimed, cleaned up, and returned to her proper state of existence as a civilized woman. 2. The Average This black woman is an enigma somewhat. She services as a steady employee, enjoys weddings and birthdays, and make, make a big preparations for both. She is neat, probably goes to church regularly, fix her hair nicely and speaks coherently, she is at least a high school graduate and may have some college or special vocational training. She is not overly ambitious, but is an active participant in life and enjoys many things. She is fairly clean and will celebrate and participate in festivities with a zest. She is thoughtful, mannerable, and knows how to meet people. She is proud of her level of sophistication and may party occasionally. Her be behavior with the black man is routine in that she experiences a more controlled form of suspicion, doubt, and fear. 
She may be shy by comparison to the black woman in the first category, but does not tend to make her likes and dislikes known. She is not always talkative and can be best found in examining general office duty jobs. She is a step or two higher than the mental labor and could be referred to as corny. She does not routinely abuse drugs, although she might get high every once in a while. Alcohol is her vice of choice. She is capable of consenting to marriage for perceived security and to impress her friends and family. She remains content to work from 9 to 5 weekly and will see her steady view on weekends or remain focused on her own priorities. She dances at the nicer bistros. She is easier to get along with than one. Her most vicious reactions are brought on by jealousy or being jilted. Her fantasies of what a relationship should be like is patterned right off television or from the Confessions magazine. She is as traditional in her activities as American apple pie. She does not ask deep questions and is content to go along with the status quo. Her faith is important to her and she mentions the good Lord when discussing certain topics. She is attracted to lower class or upstanding black men who are gainfully employed in the workforce. She may visit the fast lane, but she is most comfortably shopping at learners and cooking collard greens for dinner. She has a few secrets, but most of them are trite. She is not necessarily an innovator. She is more of a follower. She enjoys the jerry curl look and fancy cut outlandish hairstyles. She spins of some of what she has on clothes. She might have a little car, is anxious to meet men and exaggerate about her capabilities and accomplishments. She tries to be entertaining and clever when she is with her man. She is malleable. The three, the high class. This one is the smart, possibly raging beauty. Sexy, sexy, sexy. The black woman in this category are the most difficult to reach and train. She is confident, intelligent, attractive, at least by good quality standards, and wears the finest clothes has a high price, well paying position and prides herself on being state of the art aware, read books, looks at educational television and has a college degree of some sort. She goes to church sometimes, may do voluntary work and definite political parties she aligns with and may contribute heavily on special social causes if they appeal to her. She is a member of a ritzy club and has some nice jewelry wears expensive popular perfume and it is very opinionated to a fault. Her alma mater is important to her. She is amused by spectre sports, especially football, and may play tennis or bowl. She curses more in private than in public, likes to let her hair down with the girls and consider herself a prize. She may be an entrepreneur. She may snort a, l a little coke or take a few puffs of reefer, but she rarely gets out of control that she forgets her community standing and professional responsibilities. She is familiar, she is familiar with intricate banking systems, has a re retirement plan, possibly stock and money market. She is an American, she has an American Express card and travels. She likes LA, the Bahamas, Europe, possible Af Africa. She may frequent the health spa and buys expensive gifts for her man and friends. She drives a nice car, maybe a BMW or some other snazzy sports car. She may live a bit above her means, but manages to jiggle her finances to get what she wants. She is very headstrong and delights in demonstrating to the black man her wealth and vast knowledge in a variety of, of things. She is the modern girlfriend, believes she is completely self-sufficient and not particularly interested in keeping house cooking dinner every night, or train the black man with special accord. She is in favor of independence and boasts of doing things for herself and thinks the black man should do likewise. She performs beautifully in front of strangers or company, makes a good impression, and exudes sex at will. She is greatly influenced by her peers or others whom she deems as pace setters. She adopts popular trends and attitudes about dating or marriage which she gleans from magazines, news programs, or news or the newspapers. She's become ferocious when she thinks her man is playing around on her or will fight viciously to the end to prove the black man wrong. 
because she is so concerned about public opinion and what they th think she will customly deal with a black man whom she is not particularly interested in just to have an escort on her arm. She is a rat who behaves like a dog while purring like a cat. She is moody, disagreeable to live with in peace if the things don't go her way. She believes her specialized knowledge from her occupation qualifies her to be equal or superior to the black man. She would tolerate a black man as long as he fits her idea of what she look like, dress like, work like, and act like. The number three, the black woman is an insecure weight of knots that she hides behind all of her good education, fine wardrobe, shapely body, and savings account. These explanations of the three major types of black woman are not all inclusive. Some of their patterns overlap, but these descriptions give a good perception of what is available. There is another category of black women who are available. They are the picture squeak, the pic picture squisite black women who dress in Africa traditional garb. They wear brightly colored head wraps and sandals, bold African jewelry, and have dreadlocks more commonly called dreads. They may also have a ring in their nose, possibly several holes in their ears, and they wear layers and layers of fabric wrapped like a sarong around their bodies, often with no bra or underwear. They may also wear a heavy laden head wrap twisted in several attractive styles. Some of them are clean and beautiful, others are not. From a distance it is hard to tell. These black women portray a costume that implies they are not the Western ideas of dress and give the impression by their wardrobe that they represent the unknown African culture and the very roots of black women from the homeland. The impression they wish to convey is that they are in disagreement with European society and they want no parts of Americanism and bravely foster the, uh, the ideas of back in the day. On closer examination, the black man will find the the brightly colored garments are only an external facade. And when examined up close, the outfits may be so sold, soiled and the woman would have a foul body odor reeking from under her arms. Her feet may be ashy and collusion on her, and her skin is uncared for. Her unique hairstyles, her dreads, smell. It is impossible for dreads not to have an offensive odor. Hair breeds bacteria and black hair that is not washed regularly, parted, scalped, oiled, and conditioned becomes matted because it cannot breathe, so it stinks. The actual major benefit for the black woman who wears dreads is that she does not have to take proper care of her hair. No matter what kind of African sign she expounds, she is just lazy and has found a way to practice her laziness in the name of being cultural. She may also claim to be living some kind of primitive existence wherein she survives with a few civilized conveniences as possible. This means that the, the gas, electric, or water may be off in her home. She might bed down each night on a hard floor or on a pallet and claims to be a vegetarian or only eat health food or spew some other specialized diet that matches her outfit and hairstyle. Her religious views are complicated and confusing. Her home is filled with African statues, African print fabrics, and red, black, green symbols and colors associated with the African continent. She may smoke she may smoke reefer. If the black man questions her about her reasons behind wearing the dreads, he will find that these sisters who may wear dreads and look alike do not have a unified main doctrine or creed they believe in. Most of them have a different explanation and belief about why they are involved in this particular unwholesome lifestyle. This group of natural looking sisters practice the same deceit and mockery of the black man behind his back as much as the black woman with perfume hair or a jerry curl. Her values may be may even be considered more uncivilized because she is living on a very low level of existence by choice. If she is in rebellion, it is only against herself. She does not teach her children proper table manners or personal hygiene. They are witness to be badly dressed, in need of a haircut or combing, and have no knowledge as to why their black mother insists that they wear dreads. 
These black children are shown by example that it is acceptable to live in squalor and go without without co conventional conveniences that make for a clean home environment. The sisters who propagate this kind of life is most happy when she can find a black man who will go along with her alleged cultural statement and who agrees with her deplorable living conditions in the name of rejecting American lifestyles. These black women should realize that there are no historical of black women who dress and live like she does who represent the pinnacle refined and admire black womanhood. The fact that she has no logical explanation as to why she is wearing her hair that way or living that way is another hint that she is confused and has only found a way to be flashy, distinct, distinguishable, impact her presence on onlookers. It is impossible to represent the original queenly black woman by living in filth and not using deodorant. This black woman thinks that by neglecting her personal hygiene, she is making an impression or originality. Be aware that the only statement she is making is that she is nasty and too lazy to take care of herself and her children, so obviously she will have no interest in trying to help a black man to take care of himself. Dirty is dirty. Make no mistakes about it. The other black women who sport the dreads look have no idea as to why they are wearing them other than they get a lot of attention and have just adopted this hairstyle because it is popular and relieves, relieves them of, of going to the hairdresser. Her idea is to appear to be black or natural. This black woman is very in favor of being different to point of a fault. She doesn't know that sometimes being different means one has to look ridiculous or outlandish. There were many levels of lifestyle in Africa too, and the tribes whose women wore dreadlocks represent one of the small, lower tribal classes and custom. There are much higher standards of behavior and the black woman can emulate if she studies the black woman of over 6,000 years ago. Her imagination of what married life is like, most of the black woman's ideas concerning a happy home is derived from television, paperbacks, and the fairy tables read to her when she was a child. She believes strongly in a so-called American dream of a marriage. A house, a husband, whistling off to work, exciting trouble-free days, vacation, a two-car garage sheltering a Mercedes or Jaguar, candlelight dinner, out often, fantastic sex, wardrobe and popular friends, with her man right by her side. He'll, he'll show her special considerations, support her every aim, adjust his personal wishes to match hers, be non-demanding, heap beautiful gifts on her, flowers, escort her to elegant affairs, and constantly assure her of his undenying love. And never look at another woman again and he'll be home, happy with her every night. What a dream. What a crock. This dream is destined to turn into a proverbial nightmare. Even if the black man is able to do all the above except be home with her every night, she will wail as if the world is ending. The black man is a rock like the earth and she logs to settle down. The black man is an exploring bird and has to soar. He is out of there. Black women see marriage as the way to finally own her black man. It is not enough that the black man has been forced to be a slave to the white woman for over 400 years. Now the black woman wants him to voluntarily enter into a new type of slavery. One she claim is laced with love called marriage. As long as the black man stays right Beside the black woman and is able to account for his every move and provide an acceptable explanation for every moment spent away from her, she is at ease. No black man can pass this kind of test. The black man is not even interested in passing this kind of test. He wants to be free. Not free of responsibility and commitment, but free of motion. He's got to go. If the black man starts out hanging around incessantly with black women every night, every weekend, calling every day, all day, reporting his whereabouts, explaining his absence, and so forth, he will be in for big problems. 
The black woman is conditioned to dealing on one level with everything. So if the black man values his freedom of motion, he must not spend every waking moment sniffing behind his women because after a while, she grows the cover to this kind of company and will be loud, loudly when things change and go back to normal. Marriage is not a club. The leading member does not have to be present every moment for the other members to benefit from his instruction of allegiance. Plus, in order to continue to learn and secure information to benefit his family, the black man must go out into the world and check out every aspect of it as it pertains to his existence. He must do this to stay abreast of changing times, worldly activities, and trends. He is not remembered as staying in the house, the hut, the tent, or the teepee. It is his earth, his universe, and his decisions about when he wants to stay in the house at home with the black woman. Any black man who is living under a hassle from the black woman because she does not like him being away from home will not have peace with her. The black man must seek, maintain, and insist upon his freedom of motion. The black woman thinks that every time the black man is absent and unaccounted for, that he is with another woman. The black man has more interest in life than just running from one black woman to another. At least he should have more interest than that. The black woman must be taught to use her mind in other ways, to discover other needed ideas than just sit at home, imagine all kinds of negative occurrences every time the black man leaves the house. If she would work, would work harder to make his home heaven, he might want to stay there longer. A black man, a black woman slash wife with a sense of humor is worth her weight in gold. With a sense of humor and the ability to do Laugh at mistakes, laugh at embarrassing situation, and laugh at fear when it's discovered to be unfounded is one of the best attributes the black woman can have. She will have to be coaxed out of her phonies and seriousness sometimes so she can laugh and release her tensions about life. The black woman must be taught the value of greeting her man with a smile. She is surplus and takes everything so seriously that she robs herself of the pleasures and entertainment of daily living. She gets uptight if a certain thought passes through her mind and she may suddenly change. The black man will have no idea what caused her to change her mood. Each day when the black man enters the existence of a black woman, he does not with caution because he is not sure what will he meet. He is not sure if it will be happiness, sadness, anger, violence, or neutrality. She is not consistent. She is, in fact, consistently inconsistent. It requires a lot of attention from the black man for him to keep up with her many moods. It's hard work and work that the black that most black men do not have time for. The black woman's moodiness is another way she has of controlling the black man. If she can keep him entwined with dealing with her various moods, she can keep his attention. Soon the black man learns to recognize the black woman's various moods, and when he sees hell blowing in the earth, he gets out of her way. When the black woman is angry, she pollutes the atmosphere of the black man. When asked what is wrong, she replies, nothing. It is an outright law that is designed to intrigue the black man into spending time trying to figure out what's wrong. A lot of life can be used up this way. Life that could have been spent grooving. There was a time when the black woman planned to marry so she could stay home, raise children, and set up housekeeping. Today, the reverse applies. Few black women are willing to give of their career goals to marry, settle down, and raise a house full of black children. On the surface, this may appear to be modernized high intelligence and her innocent desires to achieve occupational goals, but we know better. The black woman sees all around her black children with problems and the product of unhappy marriages and unions. She sees children from the best of backgrounds with attentive parents go astray. Disobedient and disrupted children on drugs, in prison, or pregnant, and on the street. 
She sees what she views as a hopeless situation that obviously is not controlled by parental strictness or chastisement. She is not eager to attempt and to raise children on her own. It's too much trouble. Another obstacle she is confronted with is that she doesn't know any different type of program to use to raise her own children that will make them a success. What she knows is just doesn't seem to work. She is not aware of any system with a low failure rate or the ones that she knows would require her to make a drastic changes in her own behavior, so she regrets those, reject those. The idea of taking on the child rearing hassle is repugnant to her. Since fear is the, the most major emotion she has learned, she reacts to children rearing in the same way. Of course, instead of amending this to the black man and seeking guidance, she claims she just doesn't want children because they will interrupt her lifestyle and interfere with her independence. Plus, she thinks that when she gets pregnant, the black man will not want her anymore because she will be fat, have swollen feet, morning sickness, and lose shape. The black woman is convinced that the black man only wants her for her fine body or pretty face. During pregnancy, the fear of abandonment is fierce. Additionally, she also re realized that once she is pregnant, it will slow her, slow her down from keeping up with the black man. And after she has the baby, she will be out of commission for an indefinite amount of time. And would have the responsibility of squalling a brat from now on. All of this represents work she does not want to do and a distraction from playing games with the black man. She fears at, the, at that time that her man would lose interest in her and seek out the company of another woman who is free of all the ties of small children. Of course, this is not true, but this seems to be how she looks at it. After childbirth, she may become a little more ashamed of her body. While the black man is known to prance around nude comfortably, the black woman is more hesitant. To be naked represents vulnerability and helplessness to her, while stark naked represents a freedom to the black man. Of course, some modesty is preferred over brazenness. The black woman has been programmed visually by the media to expect the reflection in her mirror match those portrayed by sleek white and black female models who have been beneficial touch of the photographic airbrush to have a beneficial touch of the photographic airbrush to smooth out the natural images. Routinely, there is usually one part of the black woman's body that she absolutely hates. It may be her legs, her ankles, her toes, her stomach, her neck, chin, her breasts, her nose, hands, eyes, ears, knees, thighs, or buttocks. She never forgets whatever she decides her physical defect is, and her style of dressing will reflect her attempts to cover it up. When naked, she is embarrassed about having small breasts, varicose veins, sagging breasts, stretch marks, thin legs, a fleshy stomach, or a flat behind. She sees these natural body differences as a turnoff. The human body, when inhabited by all different personalities and ideas it represents, always comes with a ver variety and different shape components. There is no universal ruling that states any one design is better than one another. The black woman secretly wants to be a clone of the white woman and patterns her standards of form and beauty after her. The white man has always photographed his woman in the clothing and in the body shape that he once likes and wants her to be. No one has ever asked a black man to draw or take a picture of what he wants his black woman to be. Nor has the black man ever expressed a collective definite opinion or description of a particular physical mode of what the black woman must look like for him to consider her beautiful. The black woman does not know that the black man thinks all black women are theoretically beautiful. Certainly, a black woman who is in agreement and submission to her black man is beautiful. Her facial expression is different. She has a glowing look of resignation to peace from being in her place. And her place is a good place, a place of honor and enjoyment of life. She receives respect and protection by her man. It comes with the territory 
and she is satisfied, and so is he. Black women do not know what satisfaction is in life. They think that peace is not having to worry about money. They do not consider having peace with a black man as something that would bring satisfaction in life, or that their relationship is an important section of their lives that needs improvement. It just doesn't occur to her when she considers what it would take for her to be at ease with the black man, she thinks of all the changes she wants him to make to get in line with her idea. She is not very negotiable about making any changes in herself. She cannot see how her own behavior problems contribute to her problems because she thinks that whatever she says or does is absolutely correct. There are certain qualities some black women have that are assigned to the black man that the woman is good material to try to make it into a wife and mother. All black women are certainly capable of having the basic nature to become a good woman to the black man. But he must delve into her personality and perform several in-depth interviews if he is considering her for companionship. A live in or material relationship. Certainly the considerations to be made should be not limited or based on sex alone. Sexologists report that the total time men spend reaching a climax, ejaculating, is approximately two and a half to three hours, a little over 10,000 seconds, in his entire lifetime. Obviously, compared to the years, days and nights and all the lights can test, and the good times and the bad, moral sexual satisfaction cannot be the motivating factor when choosing a black woman for a mate. The propagation of the black nation to ensure its primness and longevity must have priority over the temporary thrill emitted from the loins. As said, any black woman can be transformed into a good wife and mother, but the job is more difficult in some than others. How much time and force the black man has to expend to create him a woman is dependent upon the level of understanding the black woman has. Nothing is impossible, but some things do take longer than others. The black man must treat the black woman right and make her treat him right. The black woman's problems represent a challenge and a responsibility. The challenge is to subdue her and put her in her rightful place. And the responsibility is to rule the black woman and be in charge of her in a civil and loving way. He must give her what she needs which is quite different for what she wants. A good black woman does not come ready-made. The following hits are signs that a black woman would possibly make a good wife to a black man. One, she is attentive and a good listener. Two, she enjoys going partying but has an equally good time at home. Three, she will have a strong spiritual commitment that helps her distinguish between right and wrong. Four, she will be partially modest in her styles of dresses. Five, she will like babies and children and include them in her life. Six, she enjoys cooking and preparing special meals or treats for the black man. Seven, she will respect her parents, his parents, and older people. Eight, she has a good personal hygiene. Nine, she does not wear a ton of makeup. Ten, she is proud of her man and claims him no matter who is present. Eleven. She keeps her house at least halfway clean. 12. She is not flagrant spender and almost manages her money. 13. She is trust, trustful and freely expresses her sexuality and desires when in private with her man. 14. She says voluntarily and offer help which she can. 15. She does not hold grudges too long and will apologize when wrong. 16. She will go out of her way to do special things for the black man. 17. She will speak good on him when he is not around. 18. She will defend him against verbal attacks from others. 19. She does not show out or curse loudly in public. 20. She smiles when she meets him. 21. She controls her anger and does not go wild when angry. 22. She will take instructions on some things without being combative. 23. She is respectful of black men in general.
The black woman who choose to marry to have a home, security, and company, but do not wish to have committed regular intimacy with the black man have amazingly worked out a lifestyle whereby they live with the black man in the same household but do not have sex with him. They choose perfect opportunities to implement this program such as, one, immediately after she has had some type of operation or a baby, two, after or during some heavy emotional trauma, three, after an accident of some sort or a a back problem, four, by claiming that intercourse is too painful. The black woman counting on the black man's ignorance of certain female medical programs will use these illnesses, real or imagined, to deny the black man's sex. She will often talk to her friends and take their advice and old wives' tales and make up a lot of filmsy excuses and exaggerate her symptoms to defend, prove, and justify her denial. Some black women do not enjoy sex after marriages or hate the thought of it after having children. Will perform all of their other wifely duties except having sexual intercourse. This marital arrangement to live out of the marriage without sex is strangely accepted by some black men. The women who practice this forgedly ignores or pretend they do not mind their husband seeking sexual gratification elsewhere. The scene, while weird to others who knows of this situation, works if both parties agree. Sometimes they sleep in the same bed or separate beds or separate rooms. They share a home, bills, children, and other family activities, but there is no sex. And they are committed and love each other. This seeks physical attention elsewhere. In others, not as drastic couplings, the woman would just pretend she is on her period, complains on several headache or weariness, play like they are asleep, Wait until the man goes to sleep before getting in bed, wear burky hair rollers or a cold cream on their face, or if forced, they will consent but just lie there and be non-participant in the act. All of this is done to discourage the black man from approaching her for sex. As a last resort, they make, make him beg for it and still say no. It is a ridiculous situation for the black man to tolerate. Some of the black women brag to each other about the tricks they employ to get out of having sex with their men. It is often a big joke among them about how to mask these maneuvers. Oddly enough, the black women who do this think it is normal and necessarily. They are full of contradictions. Since the full indoctrination of the women's rights movement, some black women have commenced to refusing to give up their main names to accept their husband names after marriages. They adopt titles like 1. Martha Jean William Smith 2. MJ William Smith They are referred to as Mrs. William Smith. This is not their own idea. It is also another statement to demonstrate to the black husband that by refusing to give up their family name and accept his as the tribal leader, they are exerting their individuality. This is considered modern and gush. It is also a public reminder to the black man that he does not own her. This system is especially popular among the so-called professional or corporate women. They believe they must maintain a separate identity in order to get credit for what they do. During whatever kind of marriage or relationship the black man manages to have with the black woman, there will come times when the black woman feels compelled to assert herself about particular issues. They refer to this as, I got him told. Black women admire and congratulate each other when they get the black man told. It usually comes in the midst of one of those, I'm sick and tired of your bullshit conversations. Many times the black woman will listen to other women's renditions of getting the black man's told and then go home and try it out on their own husband or man. If he goes along with it, she is confirmed in her position and she is convinced that if she presented right, she can have her way about anything. Black women tend to think that the black man's cooperation or agreement with her ideas is a sign of weakness. 
Black women tend to think that the black man's cooperation or agreement with her ideas is a sign of weakness, or if they are really tripping, they think he goes along because he's just crazy in love with her. Or if they really are tripping, they think he goes along because he's just crazy in love with her. Every once in a while, a rebellious American black woman will marry a man from one of the African nations or the Middle East, miraculously treats him like a king. She alters her wardrobe, diet, hair, or other to make sure she, she is in line with his requirements. She has been known to try her Western rap on the African and found that she, the, the way she is used to train the black man is unacceptable to the African and would not be tolerated. The African man does not reign over the American black man. He is not better looking, and the African man is not more intelligent. The African just has another idea, so he has functions on that. His idea, which is incorporated incorporated into all his activities, is that he is the boss and the woman must do as he says. He does not deal with any doubt about it. He is firm and confident and at ease with the idea that he is the authority and superiority over his woman. By dealing out of that mindset, he is able to be successful with the American black woman. Her games and silliness does not work with him. She knows that the African knows better. And she knows that he is right even if the match fails. It is not true that when when opposites attract, they are able to live in peace and harmony. Peace and success comes from two people who are very much alike, people who are attracted based on similar needs and ideas. If the black man's woman disagree with him on this, on his basic principles concerning lifestyle, priorities, and goals, he will not be happy in his relationships with her. The black man takes his take a big risk at a time consuming chance by assuming that he will be able to sway her to his way of thinking as time go by. At first, the differences may seem amusing or challenging, but as the seriousness of life prevails, he will find that it is no fun being with a woman who disagrees with him. There is no unity in that kind of a match. Things are only right to the certain extent, so there would be some issues throughout the life cycle that would have to be compromised. But the risk can be minimized by interviewing the black woman about her own ideas and finding out why she thinks that way she does. The black man must not be impressed with the initial behavior presentation of the black woman when he first meets her. During the heated period of getting to know each other, the black woman will pretend that anything the black man says or does is okay. Yet later, when familiar literacy sets in, she will present the real deal that she lied about and explain fully why she doesn't feel that way at all, with a, with a fervor. Love does not conquer all. Love does not make everything turn out all right, no matter how hot the passion. No matter how good the black woman looks or what she has, if she is is not on her black man's side and supportive of him, then she is not his woman. The black man can tell which woman is his by the way she submits to his ideas and instructions and by the way she works to make him happy. His black woman should take the position that his success is her success, their success, and work as a team. The particular type of marriage practice in America I America does not have a good success rate. It is reported that only one in four marriages actually works in the terms of longevity and happiness. These are the same eyes at the blackjack table in Las Vegas. One in four, most people lose. The reasons why American marriages between black men and black women fail is threefold. One, hypocrisy. Neither the black man or black woman are able to live up to the European rules and exceptions of marriage. Since neither party is able to successfully obey the rules, yet spend their lives pretending to, the union is doomed by hypocrisy. Both pretend to do what they know full well is against their nature. 2. Dishonesty. 
the black man, because of the uncompromising uncom rules of monogamy, is forced to lie to his wife because if he tells her the truth, it will put his home in hell and jeopardize his peace. His dishonesty is root in his not wanting to admit publicity, publicity that cannot and will not play the merciful agreement by the current rules. 3. Disenchantment The black woman mainly suffers from disappointment and dissatisfaction when her unrealistic dreams of marriages are shattered. She has been taught to expect the impossible, and when it does not materialize, she becomes disponent, and her dischantment colors every aspect of her marriage. It does not turn out the way she imagined, or the way was it told it will be. And she does not, and she does not have a plan B, so she becomes hostile. The black woman does not understand that all of her ideas about marriage were given to her from another people's nation. She responds to situations according to what she what has she's been taught, according to what has been bred into her brain to ensure that she gives up her bright right, her birthright, and to ensure that she cuts all ties with her original roots. Periodically, when the black man chooses the older black woman <clears throat> for his mate, he can relax a little. The older black woman, about 39 to 50, has tried all the tricks and games and accept her failure rate. She is more apt to be willing to try something different during her twilight love years. As we have heard, she is more at ease sexually, may be easier to talk to, and is more patient and tolerant. She been there, and while there, the men in her age bracket may be breaking away from their own tradition and becoming more interesting than younger women, she is caught in a whirlpool, a floating sometimes, detached with a lot of, of life left in her. While she may look adult and settled and has claimed she would never be considered a young man, she can be approached. The drawbacks are that she will not want to, be, to bear children and would not be as interested in juvenile type activities and she may be a shaver. She will also have a multitude of old problems she may wish to discuss or receive advice on. She is faithful and becomes energetic about her new romance. During this span of life, black women commence to lie about their age. On the other side of this group are the women in the same age bracket who remain inflexible in their ideas about what they will take and what they will not take off of a black man. They are firm and brittle in their attitudes and swear they are better without a man. They masturbate or just dismiss sex completely. This alone makes them bitter and hostile. Many of them take good care of themselves and spend their time with children and grandchildren, their jobs, short trips, clubs, or political affiliates. They might return to school, take up a hobby, or become submerged in church activities. She is considered by those who don't have to live with her as a nice woman, a decent woman. She may also drink alcohol and do voluntary work to fill out her time. She is full of stories of failed romances and had black men who she claimed abused her without reason or cause. She believes herself innocent. The older, more mature black woman may do several things as a last attempt to hold on to her fading youth and beauty. She may wear heavier makeup, have breasts or facial augmentations, plastic surgery or silicone, to improve her body form. And sadly, sometimes she tries to wear youthful looking styles of, of, of clothes. Whether the younger people are wearing, she may try to wear it too. She will also try to fix her hair in a more younger looking style and reveal more of her body with low cut tops, shorter skirts, mid-drift blouses, low in the back and front dresses, high high heels, shorts, many dresses, and, and, and the like. It is not hard to recognize this type of black woman at the disco or in bars. She is easily to be noticeable and is generally commend, commented on by onlookers with comments like, look at that old broad trying to be young, or she trying to hold on, or she ought to be ashamed of herself. 
And rightfully so, she stood. Of course, other more crass comments are made that do not need to be repeated here. The black woman, when this stage is very, very unhappy, has low self-value and, and is confused. She believes that the only way she can attract a man is by pretending to be young, and she is mentally blind enough to believe that she can get away with it and that no one can see that she is an old sister trying to be young. The fact that she cannot recapture that part of her life does not matter to her. She thinks that how she dresses or dances will make her accepted by men. She does not know that each stage of her life can be beautiful and content if she thinks right and behaves in such a way as to be viewed as beautiful. The older black woman wants to be young and the younger black woman wants to be old. Or so it seems. Actually, they would rather be anything than what they are. The elderly black woman, age 55-ish up to 100. The senior black woman, if she chooses, can be beautiful. If she has taken care of herself physically, eaten properly, had minimal substance abuse, and had pleasant positive thoughts, she is beautiful. If she has had a man or still has one, she looks even better. If she has been a bona fide hair raiser, is disappointment in her man, her children and her life, her conditions will reflect that accordingly. If she is regretful to her life and has bad memories and grieves over them, she will relate her misery to anyone who gives her an ear. Often the disappointed old black woman can be found in the community warning the young girls don't let no man make a fool out of you or all men want to do is use you or they, will, they only want one thing. She may report to the other older woman in the neighborhood that she is doing better than ever since she got rid of her man she used to have. She might further tell them, I didn't get, I didn't ever get anything out of it anyway. She is a sad sight. Black females elders wrought with turmoil and regret relating lifetime memories about her unfulfilled, unfulfilled tenor. She will brag on how she has always been headstrong and determined to do as she pleased. She did, and now she is alone. Sorry that her life has passed and wishing she had another chance to do it all over again. The only ones of them who are married and have been basically happy for many years and who still enjoy the youthful benefits of sex will be glowing and satisfied. If she ha has been having a man or on a regular basis, her body will be more enticing than that of a black woman who brags about how she get rid of her man years ago. She would dress better, take care of her hygiene better, and be pleased with her life and for herself and her life. She has pride and is respected for intelligent knowledge and advice to the young. The older black woman who is dis dissatisfied will have the face that looks defeated, weary and worn. Her flesh will hang looser on her bones and she has wrinkles from her permanent frowns and bad ideas. She may be careless about her clothes, her home, and will, take, will talk to herself a bit she develops out of loneliness or a breakdown of her mental abilities. She complains about the young people in the neighborhood and carries gossip if she gets a chance. Unfortunately, sometimes the older black woman would give negative advice to her granddaughters about how to treat their men. They advise them to live their own life, don't get tied down to no one man, keep something for themselves and go when he goes. They might even explain to other young women about how they were such a good wife for 30 to 40 to 50 years and didn't get anything for it. It is not exactly plain what the older black woman expects for being a good black woman. There is no other reward except the satisfaction of knowing she's performed a job well done for a deserving black man and herself. The older black woman also sometimes think the modern black woman has more privileges than her because she has more. She has the option of doing worldly things other than getting married and having a family. 
She admires the idea of independence and wishing she has thought of it. Another group of older black women are equivalent to the dirty old man, and she is obsessed with the sex discussing it, per se. She pries into the affairs of younger people, openly uses raw language when referred to sex, and talks about her own conquests alleged made when he was young. She, she mesmerized filthy remarks and may curse loudly in public. Her personal hygiene is lacking and she may drink a little wine on the side or nurse his hard liquor daily. Sometimes the older black woman, if she is blessed to be still be married and have a man, is still bickering with her years ago. It's still bickering. I know it's with her black cousin about disagreements they have 20 to 30, 40 years ago. The older black woman can be just as rebellious as the younger ones. They watch and play a lot of petty childish games and complain a lot. The older black woman also remains jealous of her black man's deep into old age. She is jealous and younger and older woman whom she thinks is laying in wait for her man. She raises big hell if she suspects her man of fooling around on her. She does this in fear that he will have sex with another woman, give her his money, or leave home. She is also more prone to want to accept being elderly or infirmed. She is quicker to accept the idea that she has already lived her life and now she can settle down and stay home most of the time. The black man clings to life to the very end and wants to enjoy the excitement and the activities for as long as possible. Retirement, different from the black woman, does not mean that productive life is finished, but started it. His woman will remind him that he is too old to do this or that he should sit down somewhere and let the young people take over. She wants him to believe he is old so that she has no longer that that, that she no longer has to worry about him being attracted attracted or attractive to a younger woman even in the older stages the black woman persists in trying to block the black man from pursuing other women it makes her bitter and vindictive it makes him tired divorce as we all know the black woman becomes very vindictive and hostile when she is divorcing the black man Generally, no matter what the reason for the separation, she has learned a great deal from the blood-sucking tactics of attorneys who have perfected the ways to take everything a man has when they divorce. The black woman, in trying to mimic them, hires shyster lawyers to get the most that she can from her divorce. She is not concerned with the admissible parting, and she is not concerned as to whether or not the black man has enough funds left to live on or to remarry to start another family. She could care less. Her attitude is that if he doesn't want me or did this or did that to me, then he doesn't deserve to live. She wants him to suffer the kind of pain and rejection she does. And if the only way to hurt him permanently is in his wallet, then so be it. Certainly, black children must be provided for and part of the provision is money. Some of her stories of child support and living expenses are often exaggerated to fit the situation. She wants the black man to pay for not being with her. It should be mentioned that if the black man divorces the black woman, the reasons are usually not unfounded. She either did something or wouldn't do something. If he doesn't want her anymore, it's for a reason. A black man keep a good woman who pleases him no matter who else he meets or who else he adds onto his life. On the other hand, if he if she divorced him, the reason just might be anything, and are too, much too numerous to list here. Any petty or long-range grievance is used to, the, to, to end what she believes is an unhappy union. While reasons of insanity, extreme jealousy, batterment, drug or alcohol abuse are considered justifiable, there are many other ones mostly based on her unwillingness to submit to the man as the head. The sympathy always leans towards her. When the black man's family is weaseled away from him, often by a person he has no control over, sometimes it's his mother-in-law, ex-friends, her girlfriends or a stranger, 
It is very emotional, sensitive time for him. It is always worse when his woman falls out of love for him because of rumor mongers and misadvice by others. In this society, all of the sympathy and support is usually thrown towards the woman, especially if she has children. Others become concerned about where she will live, how she will support herself, what will become of the children. Will she have transportation? Does she have a babysitter, etc.? These are all the questions considered by well wishes or bystanders. Little concern is felt for the black man when he becomes out from a love or a marriage relationship. It is falsely assumed that he will be able to instantly adjust and fit in easily elsewhere. This consensus of opinion is formed because most onlookers believe that since the man does not have the responsibility of children, that he can keep on stepping and not miss a beat. This is not true. It is just as horroring an experience for the black man to have to readjust or reorganize his life as it, will, as it is for the black woman. He, too, has to first formulate and stituate an entirely new daily lifestyle that excludes his former mate and possible their children. His tears and frustration be shown only in private, absolute privacy, when he when when only he is present. It is not definitely known exactly what the effect of displacement is on the black man after he accepts the responsibility of being a husband and father. When this is snatched from him, he shares the same outrage the same pain and the same confusion as the black woman. His separation is not different just because he does not have children. He is still faced with the question of what to do with himself and who can he be with while on the rebound. The black woman starts out disbelieving in the black man, so for her had failed marriage or relationship is expected. Therefore, when it surfaces, she may congratulate herself on the fact that she knew all along that it wouldn't work. The black man who who believes in good possibility of having a good black woman and a good home is shattered when he must face the inevitable end of relationships, especially one wherein he has invested time and trust. Additionally, he is often thudded with a disconnected from his children is heart wrenching and unburdenable, but he has to shake it off and go on. This is what is expected of him and he had erroneously grown to expect it from himself. Try as he may, there are few cases where the father is awarded the custody of children and usually the court fight is a long and dirty one, plus it's expensive. He has to theoretically give up his children and hope that his ex mate will keep his memory and presence alive and that she will be very careful in choosing another man so as to protect his children. If they are girl children, it is extremely difficult for him to maintain an attachment because girl children historically take the side of the mother. Boy children, while more attracted to the father as the guardian, are generally forced by the mother and extended family members to remain with the mother also. Many a, many a black father has to, to watch his son crumble emotionally when he is raised solely by the mother. Often the children are caught in a tug of war between the parents who are both vying for the children's allegiance. Breaking up is a terrible ordeal for all parties involved. Even if the partners both agree that the relationship is over, the black woman must understand that her pain is no different from form the black man's and that he hurts just as deeply when the love has faded.